I think we're ready to, to start. I first, again, um, you've been hearing me talk this whole time, but again, my name is Jacob Leon. I'm with working uh, on behalf of the Port of San Diego on this Pepper Park expansion. I want to echo what the Commissioner Manajo said at the very beginning. Um, I want to apologize. I know there was a capacity issue that we had at the very beginning, and I, I, tr I truly apologize for that. Um, and we'll make sure that it doesn't happen in the future. But I am very grateful that you all um, are here with us tonight on time and ready to share your feedback. In, in my room, I have Ana Pesetis, who is on um, the Port of San Diego. She's helping me manage this project on her end, and she'll be helping me take notes for today's conversation. Uh, Commissioner Duque, thank you for being here. I see you're in my room as well. So I want to kick off the conversation. I want to go in order. You know, we started, uh, let's start with, uh, first I want to just open the floor for any general questions. If there aren't any general questions, we'll start with the well-being active improvements. So I'll like the fun park stuff. It's okay if we jump around. Um, that's that's not an issue. Um, but we'll, we'll just try to go in order so we can have our, our, our notes, you know, be concise and appropriate. Any any just general question that's not related to park amenities I can answer real quick. Yes, Danny. Yeah, I, I understand uh, the limitation with the Zoom uh, this evening wasn't wasn't anticipated, um, but I think it should be addressed uh, somehow. And I don't know if we know what those options might be right now. Uh, however, I think that it, it does need to be addressed. And if there's a way to make a comment like that, that would be great uh, this evening. Great, yeah. thank you. I appreciate that. I do Any have other a general question? That we... Just a comment yes, on Janice? that as well. Can, thank you, greetings everyone. Uh, can it still be considered a public workshop if all the public was not able to attend? Uh, it, this is still considered a public workshop. It was just an oversight on the capacity issues with Zoom. And so um, we will be discussing with the, with the Port of San Diego how we can mitigate and address this issue. But thank you, Janice. But what a, and, a, and another um, comment, what a good problem to have all of these people showed up. So great job, everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Janice. Yes, I am, I'm very grateful that it, it is a full house because Sometimes you get a registration list and that is large and then 10% of people show up. So I'm, I'm very grateful and, and thankful that we did hit the, we, we are at 100 people tonight. Any other quick general question before we, uh, Commissioner Duque? Yeah, uh, going to Danny's comments and, and, and Janice's comment. You, I guess you guys had prior registration. How many number, what was the number that you guys were anticipating uh, or that had potentially signed up because that would probably give you an indication if you had more than 100 signed up and your capacity was 100, then we fell short on, on meeting the needs of what the, the community wanted. So uh, just my comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Commissioner. Yeah. We, were, and we were hoping to hit about 100 people today and that was the goal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. So let's go ahead and start with, um, do you, would you like me to reshare the images again for inspiration or, or do we have, um, uh, or is somebody ready to share their ideas on the kinds of play and exercise and other types of um, park features that they would like to see here in Pepper Park? Do you mind putting up the map itself again? Uh, that, that would kind of help get a visual. Sure, the, just the map of Pepper Park itself? Yeah, and with the new area. Sure. One moment. The WhatsApp play graphic. Okay. Great. So here is the Let me maximize it. So the WhatsApp play graphic here go. Um, the, the park itself, the, the big bold dash outline that you see right here, that's the whole park expansion itself. What we have in green, that is part of the expansion uh, that has been allocated as part of the balance plan. But the whole park itself, um, the majority of the park itself has, there's opportunities to look at it and reconfigure. The, what you see in red, such as the pier, uh, the restroom building and the boat launch, parking, the boat launch itself, and the aquatic center. 
those are items that will remain. We've identified it, the picnic area that's just south of the restroom building as a nice little corner in the park that, that we probably would could keep if, if needed. Uh, but I, this, um, that was, uh, let me put it to gallery mode. Did this answer your question? Just seeing the map again? Yeah, it's very helpful. Thank you. No problem, Ricardo. So did you want to kick off the conversation uh, and regarding the, the type of well-being activities that mm -hmm. you would like to see? Uh, Ricardo, well, being, we'll go to Danny. Being mindful of, uh, I know uh, our mayor said, uh, go ahead and go lobster, but uh, being mindful of uh, everybody's budget in a sense, what are some of the structures there? I know you just pointed out the, uh, the picnic area since it has the restrooms and all that. It seems like a good idea to keep. Uh, I myself ride, uh, cycle through there. One thing I've done when I've been training for those long, long rides and I run out of water or I run out of sugar and those vending machines are empty. That's kind of mm -hmm. something that came to the top of my head. Some, some type of, I mean, honestly, the other, there, there's no really way or place to buy stuff uh, for the cyclist that runs out of et cetera, snacks. Uh, just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Okay. No, yeah, the, you, you know, just talk or you need to raise a hand, sorry. That's okay, Daniel. Yeah, feel free to raise your hand. That way we can just make sure that everybody, and I'll be monitoring the um, the, the cameras right here. And so I we had Danny raise his hand right before you. So we'll go to Danny and then Danielle will, will come back to you momentarily. Great, thanks. Thanks, Jacob. Um, I, I'd like to kind of raise the question as to what, what is the purpose of, if you're going to release and if the, if the port's plan is to release the, EI, the draft EIR in the next couple of months, I think probably what's helpful from port staff's perspective is to understand what kind of uses, like what, what kind of, how to build out the project description uh, that fits in with the NOP uh, that would lead into the EIR. Um, and so some of the some of the conversations that I've heard locally uh, with stakeholders from National City is that they would really like to see uh, an expansion of uh, the open space. Um, I, I mean, I think I think a lot of the other features that were shown tonight, I think they're they they've expressed interest in that too, like the water features and the playgrounds. But I think years ago there was a commitment from the port to expand the park, and I think. I think the concept was to expand it in like an open space area. I think uh, also last year in 2020, when the city of National City released a vision for Pepper Park, it was a little bit different. It had a, a recreational center as well as Granger Hall. So it had a much, um, a much more built environment versus open, open grass areas, open play areas. And so one of the things that you showed on the map this evening showed, um, I think if you bring it up again, the yellow area showing uh, that the parking, more of the parking area could be utilized for things other than parking, which I think is great because that just means that there's extra space for things like recreation, which is I think a top priority for um, you know many of the stakeholders that live in Old Town. And uh, unfortunately, Many of them couldn't attend tonight because they couldn't get in. But I think, uh, you know, on behalf, I'm I'm expressing some of their some of the feedback they they provided to me. Thank you, Jenny. Those are really great comments. Um, Danielle, we'll go to you, and then we will I will call on. Well, as I'm seeing it in order, we'll go to Charles Rayley after Danielle. Sure, so, Danielle. Thank you so much. Um, my background is I have a master's degree in landscape architecture, so I've been. Uh, working on quite a few waterfront development projects uh, internationally in Sydney, Australia, and uh, did a Macau Marine Park, and there's Tivoli Landing in Singapore, and also just, you know, by still traveling, like, uh, internationally, I think I had a, a lot of different ideas. I really like the direction goes with this particular park. First of all, I think in terms of a yellow zone versus a uh, right that you cannot touch, but the expansion and yellow should really be considered as homogeneous development instead of just patch on. So I like that comment. I like the previous comment in terms of even functional, you know, 
aspect of it, because this is what I realized when I go to Australia, nobody carry water bottles, right? Water bottle is really California theme, but it's so environmental unfriendly. So all the public park space would have the portable safe drinking water in the public space in Sydney, Australia. Even they have like a two different size. So one for the dogs, for the pets, and one for the people. Mm -hmm. So some little things that will come play later on for the physical site design or programs. But in terms of just look at the whole thing, the big idea, now we're talking about play. I think the most important is that interactive elements. So how you can utilize the water as a feature to have people from not only visual aesthetic part of view to take advantage of water front. Uh, also the water need to be, uh, in my mind, to be introduced on site with some water features for, for instance, you know, typically landscape architecture, you could have like um, area, like a fountain interactive, have kids just imagine right? Kids was yeah. like a jump around and with whatever our music fountain. So, so there's a design element can contribute to it, but I just say in terms of and the amphitheater, all that. And also just as a previous made a comment, it will be great to have that multi-purpose use of different area. For instance, mm -hmm really look at the heart, how much parking space is. Because I designed theme park, I know the first thing we do is a parking because to accommodate mm -hmm. visitors. But now we're talking about connectivity, um, active transportation, have people more bike and walk. Can we really you know, have the parking lot to be reduced to functional, but not wasteful? And now, of course, talking about dual purpose, the parking mm -hmm. lot can be also for the market and for the different things. So, but I love a lot of ideas. I mean, um, so I want to give uh, time for other people to address different sections. So this is my main part is like mm -hmm. interactive play. I think for all age groups, it's important. I introduced the water, invited water into the settings that just look out. Great. Thank you. A lot of great. Really great ideas. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Uh, Charles, and then we'll go to Rosina right after Charles. Yes, uh, thank you. I uh, hope some of this uh, ties in a little bit with Danielle's uh, talking about interactive stuff. Um, I, I don't live in National City and I don't have a business there, but I've been a volunteer there and I do serve on the National City Public Art Committee and the Port Public Art Committee, and so uh, retain an interest in, in what goes on in the city. Um, I think I'm right in saying, uh, demographically, it's the youngest city in San Diego County. And uh, I know it's very family oriented. So uh, uh, it's sort of a general comment, but it could be a pervasive one. I would like to encourage thinking on the part of the planners that would really uh, make the park as friendly as possible to uh, families and young kids. And I'm talking about thinking specifically about like toddlers in that age, because they not only play in the park at that age, um, but in a real sense, they learn what a park is all about and why a park in a city is great. And they begin to become uh, citizens and participants um, in their community in that way. And so the, the more and younger, I think folks you can, you can get to the park, uh, the better it is not only for them, but for the entire community. Um, I second uh, uh, what was said about lighting and the slide that you showed about the underbench lighting was just a great example because it's lighting. I mean, when we think about lighting in a park, we think about safety lighting and overhead arcs and so on. But that um, uh, slide of the underbench lighting, it just it, it's something you might not actually notice in your uh, uh, passing through the park, but it has this great mood value. And there are other uh, ways of using lighting uh, that, that do add to mood as well and, and encourage people um, uh, at, at all hours or, or at least at, <laughs> at all waking hours. Um, Third thing, and I hope I'm not going over too much. Um, I was in Pasadena over the weekend and uh, happened to be near, near the Rose Bowl. 
if anybody knows Pasadena, they know um, the, the area where the Rose Bowl is really not terribly convenient to the, to the city. It's sort of out of the flow of things. And yet it was astounding to me how many people uh, were there using it in many ways, mostly walking or jogging, but there's also soccer going on and um, uh, I guess a little bit of horseback riding and, and things like that. Um, and so my, my, I started to think about why, and I think it's because it really has a sense of place and it really feels like a part of that community. And if, if we can uh, do for um, Pepper Park, somehow create that ambience so that it feels like home. And I think Dookie was talking a little bit about that. That, that would be terrific. Um, uh, the, uh, I will leave it. Oh, the, uh, um, Danielle talked about the parking and so on. Um, gosh, I don't know if it's possible. There's talk about a water shuttle. It, it almost appears maybe uh, we ought to be thinking about a way to shuttle people in and out um, uh, who, because we don't want to clutter up the park with, with, with cars. And um, you know, we think about shuttles as you know, sort of conventional things, but maybe they could be uh, exciting little kinds of things for, for kids so that that becomes part of the interactive, interactive experience as they show up there. Uh, and the play equipment that I remember there is kind of passive. Um, I mean, it, it's sort of anchored in, in place. And if you can get particularly young kids um, moving on stuff that's interactive, it's far better. We're right by the side of the water. If you've ever seen kids play on a cargo net, it's wonderfully interactive. Um, it's, it's safe and kids not only uh, get to interact with the thing, they, they get to interact with other kids interacting with it. So. Mm -hmm. so that's the extent of my comment. Might, it might be worth having an early childhood consultant if uh, you decide to take that uh, approach. Yeah, great commentary, Charles. I love that you acknowledge the multi-generational aspect and the importance of multi-generation for, for a park fam being family oriented and for kids. Uh, so I think that's something that I think resonates really well because every time I go to Pepper Park, lots of families and kids are there um, yeah. playing, yeah. hanging out. Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm going to go to Rosino and then Janice, and then I'll go to Bradley or after Janice. So Rosina, Rosina, go ahead, please. Hi, thank that. you, everyone. Um, um, I, I, I listed several topics that I'm being recording since the last three years, and I've been engaged in a community organizing. But Pepper Park is one of the destinations that all the national city are iconic um, destination is. So I'm pretty aware and um, mindful about what the environmental care it is. But a several topics come to me say the deadlines, um, the timeline for the project. Um, we as our community residents, we need to know how long it's gonna take for you or for the city or for the uh, Port of San Diego or, or any other agency that is involved in this um, a project um, to do that. So it's important to know that how we're gonna make this today happen in the future and how much it's gonna cost us too. So in order for us to know that um, we'll be um, ha having an open conversation or you can aware the population or the residents how, when is, how much is gonna take because project takes probably 10, 15 years on the past, maybe 30 years like in City Heights that it took forever to get a finally midline city um, connection for the trolley. So we need to know how long is going to take? Second of all, the park it should be a, a recreation um, a space for all the residents. So we need to get um, the ability the ability to provide opportunities not only for mobile people or that are mobile for accessing to that, but people who has not um, physical um, disabilities but emotional disabilities too. I have a, um, um, a, a person like that at home and I know a lot of families that they have the same issues that they have sensory spaces for all the um, children or for adults that they have um, this type of disability that is not invisible but is emotional. So we should be able to provide that type of amenities to those kids. Um, um, next one will be accessibility, uh, creating a sense of safety on the community. Um, not only uh, visually, but um, physically that we can access to those amenities on the part of who doesn't like to go to the beach and have a little um, time out for one hour after um, this roughly year that we all um, present and we are finally out of it and we need to be able to be outdoors, but we need to be able to create that sense of safety when we walk to those um, amenities. And my question is, 
how the other agencies like Caltrans is flexible and collaborating with you guys to those fund because we know that we have a freeway passing by and that's another um, agency that is um, that it has to be involved and how the flexibility with them to let us do, for example, art in there or create a mural on under the bridge and or, or the city, how are we gonna reinfrastructure the accessibility, not only on 24th Street, but on McKinley Avenue, which is a very underused street that is very accessible to that and goes directly to the park. So those are my topics for now to share and consider. And hopefully you can get a, a good turnout with this part and I can wait to see when it's gonna be um, officially open on the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm grabbing one more of your comments right here. So Thank you. Um, let's go to Janice. And I'm going to- Janice, we need to hear you. Gracias, thank you. Um, yes, I'm seeing that there's a lot of like-minded comments here uh, to decolonize, to use native landscaping. We have an opportunity here to set the standard um, for what can also take place in the rest of the city. So this is an exciting opportunity, not just for Pepper Park, but when we're looking at our environmental justice communities and the changes that we have pioneered. So the importance of having native plants, not just visually pleasing, but it adds to native pollinators to the, you create the native flora, you bring back the native fauna or the, the live, uh, the pollinators, right? So that's super important. And the other thing about plants that have been planted in recent opportunities uh, with city projects, or even perhaps port projects is that when you plant non-native species or trees such as the eucalyptus, it removes the water from our natural aquifers and it depletes it from the surrounding plants that might be native. So we wanna make sure that we have an opportunity to put this in place and then you're setting a standard for the rest of our environmentally justice um, impacted community. Um, also, uh, I'm seeing an opportunity for restaurants. We work in public uh, health and food systems and really looking at the importance of what to do, but not of what not to do. So we don't need any more fast food outlets. You know, let this be an opportunity for community members to bring their own food or to have perhaps a space where there might be some regulation where only healthy food can be served, just like there is um, near the schools on the vendor cart regulations. Um, so keeping that in mind, we want to keep our community healthy. It's it's priority, especially in these times. Maybe a water dispenser, like as there is in some of the library buildings throughout the county, may, might be um, behind some bars to make sure it's protected. But those uh, water purifiers might it might work in in this park, especially if it's beautiful and and uh, frequented by the community. What we're seeing in creating these green spaces. Um, throughout National City is that when you have a space that is welcoming, the community takes care of it. So when there's, oh, is there fear that someone's going to take the food that are the plants that are growing or this, or they're going to destroy this? Well, when you create a space for us, with us, then we're the ones who take care of it. And so if there ever is issues, you know, it's usually pushes unwanted behaviors away. So that's really important for us to have that territoriality, that presence. Um, and to have these amenities instead of like that fear base, no, they're, they're gonna mess it up, they're gonna destroy it, give it a chance. We'll take care of our own community. If, if we're honored, we're going to honor that space as well. Um, and yes, the cultural art of recognizing Kumeyaay history and all the history of the peoples that have contributed to the port, to National City. I think that's super important. We need to see reflection of ourselves in these images. We have, you know, uh, Black, Indigenous, people of color that are not always featured. And we need to see that in our leadership. We need to see that, especially now that we have an opportunity to re-engage uh, with our Kumeyaay relatives and others that have not always had the opportunity to shine. And the, I saw the comment about the recycling, repurposing. We have an opportunity to be environmentally conscious um, mm -hmm. and to contribute to that process and putting us in not just active in the in the play spaces, which is a wonderful, all of the all of your ideas are great, um, but like trash recycle and now at the level of composting, right? We're now hitting a new stage with, with the state and with the county on, on a bill that we're required or the county is going to be required to compost. And so let's do it voluntarily now that we have the opportunity and have those receptacles ready. Um, thank you. 
Thank you so much, Janice. We yeah. appreciate all that commentary. And thank you for acknowledging that there's some really great ideas in the chat as well. And uh, we have about two minutes before we're gonna be all brought back into the main room. So I'm gonna let Bradley and Art, um, if you can uh, go ahead and share your commentary, starting with Bradley. Yeah, I just wanna agree with the, the comment about, I think the open space is a real important pr primary thing that we try to keep as much of an open space as possible and limit uh, don't go overboard on the parking. Uh, I mean, I think we obviously need parking and uh, on regular days, there's more than enough parking there as it is right now. Uh, but, uh, and that can be used in different ways when you have an event there. Uh, the, um, also, I thought um, the issues about how much more built space do you wanna have? And regarding that question, you have, to, um, you have to make a decision whether or not you're going to have a performance area or not. And it, I you know uh, the drift I'm getting is that people want a performance area there and we need to choose which one is the right way. And, and uh, one question that I didn't see answered was, um, if you move Granger Music Hall there, does it have to be moved onto that site? And if you are gonna do that, that's gonna take up a lot of space. And um, there's a lot of expense moving that over and re renovating that building. I don't know if that's worth the expense, especially if you're gonna lose so much uh, open space at Pepper Park with it. So um, maybe it's better where it is. Um, anyway, uh, so, uh, that's, um, so I'm sort of curious about um, uh, the two options for a performance space that they, that they were recommending and which one would be a better fit for that space. Yeah, great commentary. Um, we've acknowledged their commentary on Granger Hall. I think that's part we'll be exploring, you know, performance spaces and all that as we move into the design process. So thank you so much, Bradley. And Art, um, I'll let yes. you have the closing remarks here for us before we go back into our main room. I'll try to make it quick. Um, I'm a Northwest Chula Vista resident, but um, lifelong uh, visitor of National City. Um, I, my three points are, uh, you know, we need, the park needs more open space at the Northwest corner, like expanding towards where the ships are. At least that way, um, you know, there's a view to the pier, people are fishing and a view across the channel there. I think it, it's gonna be nice. Um, and then at the Northeast corner, the, I don't know, I'm, I'm, you know, Granger Hall or this kiosko idea, you know, it could be become like an attraction so that people go to the Northeast corner and then the, of the park. Um, also, um, you know, somehow more, there needs to be more connection to the bike path. There's an awesome, you know, Sweetwater bike path, except, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of ends abruptly at this uh, sidewalk, you know, and, and there's a Shero and it's not clear that, hey, by the way, there's a Pepper Park down the road, you know, so yeah. signage or, I don't know, a real bike lane or something. But um, anyway, you know, I'm, I'm excited mm -hmm. for this project. I have complete confidence in KTU and A and, and I think it's going to be great. And I love National City, even though I don't live there. <laughs> Thank you, Art. We love seeing people who love a city that they don't live in. I think that, <laughs> that speaks for itself with the, mm -hmm. just your connection with National City. And I do appreciate your acknowledgement of the Bayshore Bikeway, that being such an important facility. And we will be de definitely looking at transportation accessibility and how we can make sure people who are on Bayshore Bikeway make the effort to go into Pepper Park yeah. rather than turning right around Pier 32 <laughs> Marina. Uh, so thank you everybody so much.